the atmosphere of the practice. The atmosphere was of trying to start off and progress. So uh, from those beginnings, you know, here we are today. When it came off time for the year out, which occurs between years three and four at college, I was offered the position to come and be the year out student, which I obviously grabbed the chance of. And um, it was a remarkable year of learning. Norman came with Richard to be a part-time tutor for two days a week in the afternoons. And I, they were also practicing as team four at this time at the Polytechnic where I was a second year student. They were a complete breath of fresh air. Uh, they had just come back from Yale and their enthusiasm was quite remarkable and communicated itself to us as the students there. But in a way of much more benefit to me was uh, Norman's clarity of communication about um, the projects one was working on. And that was between 50 and 60 years ago. And it still stays with me today. Something which has stayed with me all my life, which is that you only really learn something through mistakes you make. And if you look at those drawings of Pill Creek, it was my job to make a kind of cowl to stop the draft from the NACO louvers and I went down um, there on a visit, took measurements and then arranged the fabrication, drawing up and fabrication of these uh, 47 inches and then to my absolute horror I discovered that they had made them four foot seven inches long and of course saw with horror that um, they wouldn't fit and the whole thing would have to be redone and I told this to um, uh, Norman and Richard and contrary to the reaction I expected they were remarkably magnanimous about this elementary mistake. Reliance Controls was such a significant project. The fact that it was a fledgling office and work of a different type from uh, the houses for friends and relations uh, that was why uh, Reliance Controls was in a different league. There were other innovations, social, such as uh, making a much pleasanter workplace with amenities for people to work in. Very early on at Team 4, um, it was remarkable the uh, interest and attention that Norman paid to the idea of publication. And at that time, there was only really one form of publicity publication. There was only magazines. I particularly remember the Architectural Review, which was probably the most prestigious of the magazines, um, who then published the proper spread on the projects. And uh, that carried on um, throughout the period of Norman's architectural practice. And I, I would just say with enormous success. I think probably influenced by Paul Rudolph at Yale, Norman and Richard understood very well how if you didn't get control of the structure and the services, and particularly the mechanical services, they could wreck your building. And at that stage, an integrated approach was not common. You can't achieve that without having consultants whom you're working with very closely right from the beginning. And so it, it was eventually brought in-house in a multidisciplinary way. In the Commerce Bank, when I came back to the practice in the um, late summer of 1992, where the service corps were put at the corner of the buildings, and the three wings, as it were, were where the main office spaces were uh, provided, which was absolutely crucial to this concept of natural ventilation because from each wing of the office on the one hand was the central atrium and on the other hand were the openable windows arrangements so the air was able to flow through and up through the central flue effect of the um, atrium 
The fact it could be naturally ventilated for nearly 70% of the time, um, that was an innovation in that particular project. On the rice tag project, I think, you know, Norman took the lead in saying it was vital to preserve the graffiti. That was probably quite a difficult pill for the client to swallow. And the result of preserving the graffiti has made the project so much stronger in the end. You see all the bullet holes in the wall and that sort of thing. In the rice tag, the biggest innovation was um, the fact that the public were put over the politicians in, in the way the dome was done and the public access to the dome. And that was incredibly important symbolically. The other aspect which um, was, was the boreholes going down and that environmentally the building is very passive. Uh, that is an absolutely key, on a building of that scale, uh, Norman was 10 when the war ended. So unlike um, my generation, for example, he hadn't actually experienced, I hadn't actually experienced the war. So I think that was why it, why it um, made such a big impression on Norman.